FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is March 22nd, 2017. And well, it looks like the market is finally meeting some resistance. Is uh, this the long awaited correction? Well, we don't know that yet for sure. It's only down around 31 points today and right at 1.30 in the afternoon. So the NASDAQ's up and so is the S&P marginally. Apple's up I guess it's a new high around 140 and so is Google. So who knows? But Rick Ackerman's with us. Uh, Rick, uh, welcome back. It's been a while. Always a pleasure to join you, Kerry. Hey, likewise. So so I guess uh, you've been following this market for very closely for quite some time. Uh, have we finally gotten to the point where it's going to turn around? Has Trump phoria finally faded or is it just uh, just taking a little breather? It's over, Kerry. It's over. No, I'm, 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 I'm just kind of kidding. You know, most of my <laughs> my forecasting is purely technical, and uh, I'm always looking for reasons for top. I've got a uh, hundred fundamental reasons why I wouldn't be shocked if the Dow were to fall. Yeah. In points over over the next uh, uh, couple of months, but it hasn't happened. And you know, uh, when you're trying to pick the mother of all tops in a bull market that just entered its ninth year, uh, you do it with a little bit of, uh, with a grain of salt, a little bit of humility. But uh, that said, uh, my subscribers were short just at the right time. We bought DIA diamond puts and calls in the VIX, which is a a VXX, which is a volatility bet. And uh, we hit it just right getting in yesterday morning when the market opened with a little head fake. But it wasn't just a serendipity. I was looking at charts and in particular, an E-mini S&P chart that showed a target up near 2,400 that had taken 13 months to reach. So it was a clear target because of the, um, you know, the 13 months, it stood to be an important one. And so far, even though I say somewhat facetiously, hey, it looks like we've nailed the mother of all tops, uh, there is that chance. Uh, on the other hand, if we see the market reverse here and uh, and jam that old target, I could make a case for everything up to a technical case uh, for as high as Dow 25,000. So you'd never want to underestimate this, the craziness of this stock market, even if you have a dozen good reasons to, to, to hate it. Yeah. Yeah. So it ain't over till it's over, in other words, huh? Uh, for sure. And, and you know, whatever bullishness, I don't think that it was wrong to be bullish about uh, the Trump administration. Uh, there was definitely going to be a cutting back on the regulatory juggernaut. And also we were going to see some tax relief. But, you know, it's like how, how, how much mileage can the stock market get out of that, especially considering on that tax relief, it'll be two years at best before anybody sees relief. And uh, even most imme- the most immediate relief immediate relief would be in a repeal of Obamacare, which, as we all know, was the single largest tax ever levied against the American middle class. It was just a huge uh, payment transfer scheme, and and it, the burden on bus- that it placed on business will be alleviated somewhat relatively soon. Yeah. So you think they're going to come to an agreement, huh? Well, they have to, because even nothing would be better than Obamacare. You know, I know this personally because we've had, you know, four or five different plans over the last several years, my family plan, each one costing much more than the one before it, each one offering fewer choices and higher deductibles. And I'm not the I'm not the only one in America. And basically all of Obama, all, the only only thing Obamacare did was shift 10 people, 10 million people over to Medicaid. So, so it's an absolute certainty that, uh, you know, that Obamacare is going to get flushed down the toilet where it deserves to be. And, uh, and also the little bit of weakness that we've seen in the market, which has been attributed by the usual idiots to, to uh, worries that Obamacare, uh, that, that the Trump replacement health care plan is in trouble. Well, they're all wrong. And, and typically any trend that is said to be, that is uh, attributed, attributed to some specific item of news, uh, the pundits are always wrong about that. So in that respect, I guess we're going to see the weakness reverse. Mm-hmm. So, so it ain't over then, huh? Well, it's, uh, the market's still a betting man's game. And when you look at, uh, 
I, you know, if I were to bring the Bears case here and now, they're just a couple things. One, we've got a perfect storm brewing in the uh, residential real estate market. It came about because uh, the, the supply of homes is relatively tight everywhere, and that's forced prices up, but it's come at the same time that we've had uh, an 80 point, 80 basis point rise in the uh, long-term interest rates. So to me, the you know, that's the makings of a housing bust. But if you don't believe that, just look around at the commercial sector. If you go to any mall, uh, you can see that uh, all the retailers are having trouble. And uh, it's like they've all become sears in a way. They, they can't cut uh, uh, stores. They can't close stores quickly enough. And we're not talking about sears and, and, and a bumbling retail operation. We're talking about the sharpest guys in the business like Macy's and uh, maybe uh, and, and Nordstrom and, you know, some of the giants. So all of this amounts to probably the biggest episode of creative destruction, the, the death of the brick and mortar retail business in the United States. Uh, we've never experienced creative destruction in, in such quantity, in such degree. And for the Dow to be trading up here at 21,000, you know, 20,000, just, just at the same time, this trend is really starting to, to snowball. It's, it's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is absurd, but it's amazing. It's gone nine years here, Rick. I mean, how much longer can it really go? Yeah, well, I know you asked that question rhetorically, and uh, um, I'm prepared really to just see you know much higher higher prices. Uh, I'm always ready. I'm always uh, shorting good rally targets, like I mentioned the other day, yesterday. Uh, but I just try to keep an open mind because you know the market. It's not, it's not informed by thinking about fundamentals or whatever. It's the market is essentially being levitated on a global flood of funny money. Um, you know, you know, despite the talks about tightening, money is not that tight. You know, if, if uh, investors can get thirty billion dollars to throw at a piece of garbage like uh, like Snap or that recent IPO, mm. uh, you know that money is not hard to come by. There's just money chasing the market, but it almost looks like a perpetual mo motion machine because the money market, the money managers get OPM, other people's money, to throw at whatever garbage they, is moving up. They're all momentum players at this point, and uh, when the stocks go, go up. The CEOs get bonuses. Everybody gets their, you know, gets to cash out their stock options. It's like win, 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 win. Everybody wins, and uh, except it's been observed really that uh, there's still that gap between Wall Street and Main Street. Main Street, uh, there are a lot of people still wallowing in the great financial crash aftermath. They're still in recession. So there's really a huge disconnect there. But uh, in terms of what is feeding the market, and I didn't mention one gigantic factor, and that is uh, companies doing buybacks of their own shares. And, uh, and in the case of Apple, you know, Apple is all, all they've got to offer the world in terms of innovation is uh, it's probably going to be a, an Italian leather steering wheel cover for the driverless car that they're never going to produce. So, so Apple, even Apple is being floated up on some, uh, you know, will the, not the will of the wisp idea, but it's this idea that they're going to be able to bring back their, their foreign profits, mostly in, a lot of it in Ireland, uh, back into the U.S. under less onerous tax penalty. So, so you know, you, you look at the story behind every company, except Amazon. Amazon, I separate out from the rest. It's real brick and mortar, even though it's uh, paradoxically displacing brick and mortar. So, so I don't know. The rally's nutty at so many levels. Yeah, well, interesting. So what do you see happening with the dollar here? What's your take on the dollar? I've got a uh, 120 forecast. I've had it out there for years on a dollar. And uh, I think right now it's being a little perverse because the results of the election in Holland uh, suggested that Le Pen in France is not an absolute shoe in So, you know, these idiots that throw all the money at the market, they can't chew gum and breathe at the same time. Uh, they get a whiff of one story and they all hang together on it. And that is the idea. Well, they're already they're already hedging their bets on, on the French election. And of course, if Le Pen wins, it's going to be, you, you better be, I, I think even if you're long the straddle on the dollar that day, you're going to make money. But, uh, but the re recent weakness in the dollar, I think, is entirely attributable to the chimpanzees kind of hanging together on the story that uh, Le Pen is not a shoe in. Yeah. Hey. You think uh, you think uh, reports of her death are uh, greatly exaggerated? Well, you know, uh, 
Gert uh, Wilders has picked up a few seats in the Dutch Parliament, but it certainly wasn't a landslide. But there's there's more at stake in France because Le Pen is pretty much, uh, you know, devoted to the idea of pulling France out of the Euro Union, out of the Euro currency, and uh, being uh, sort of Britain times three. You know, Britain has been pussyfooting ever since the Brexit vote as though they needed the court's permission each step of the way to disengage uh, from from Brussels in whatever nit- niggling uh, legal east ways uh, they need to they need to but uh, you know France I think is a bigger bigger risk for Europe if they pull out of the euro because uh, <laughs> from that point it's only a hop skip and a jump before the Germans get the same good idea yeah yeah the Germans would probably gain the most by it though wouldn't they well, no, I think they, they'd really get ripped because uh, at least they've got the euro to kind of buffer the, the strength of Germany's own economy. You know, if, if, if the euro, if the, if the Germans were really, if France parted the, the EU or, or the euro currency, uh, the euro would effectively trade as a demark would. And, uh, you know, Germans, <laughs> they're... Their exports lead their economy, so they're really uh, not keen on having the the um, the demark or or effectively the euro uh, go through the roof. Uh, you know they don't have the same options as Switzerland, uh, which decided at some point, come, no matter what happens, we're going to try to trash the currency. And the Swiss succeeded, but the Germans are well. Let's say their economy is broader based, and it's hard to get the kind of leverage that the Swiss bankers did when they resolved not to to to, to let the the uh, Swiss franc. Uh, migrate higher. Mm-hmm. So, so we're in for interesting times here, aren't we? Uh, we're, <laughs> we're we're already having them. I mean, it's. Yeah. I know that we're all sort of subject to that his, that that historical narcissism where we think that whatever's going on in our own time is somehow more interesting, more more dynamic, more dangerous, more whatever than what's happened in the past. But Kerry, I got to tell you, it, it, we're really we are living in interesting times, and and there's so many things that could that are spring loaded to 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 pop that uh, anything could happen. Yeah, anything could happen and probably will, huh? <laughs> yeah, so looking at the uh, gold chart here, what's what's your take? Well, I've been really skeptical of uh, gold, but I never let skepticism get in the way of a good chart. So when the uh, April COMEX contract went through 1239.50 the other day, I basically, I've been bullish on the trade, but kind of dissing gold to my own subscribers at uh, Rick's Picks. And, um, but... You know, it's it's just a chart trade right now. The April contract currently trading 1250 is going to 1277, and uh, when it gets there, it's going to pull back very precisely from that number. But there is one other number we need to look at because if there's going to be a, a stall between here and 1277, it's going to occur exactly at the 1256.40. So that's the important number. But the way gold has pushed through. This uh, 1235.90, what I call a hidden resistance, uh, it gives 1277 a pretty good shot. Yeah, 1277. And what's the big resistance point on gold going up to 1300? Well, that's it. If, if the first time it hits 1277 on a given day, it pushes a buck or two past it, I would say, you know, 1300 next stop. 1300 would be round number resistance. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think it would be a, in a bag. Yeah. So 1300, huh? So that's a big uh, resistance point though. And it was over 1300 last year for a while. And then towards the end of the year, it just got totally beat up and you know, we saw what happened. You know, finished uh, well, under 1200. Well, started to bog down last July, the same as bonds. Yeah. Uh, they're very companionable mm-hmm. these days. The charts are tracking pretty closely at uh, treasuries and, and gold. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Hey, and what about oil? Oil, uh, I just heard that uh, Shell Oil said that in the Permian Basin, fracking a well, they can be profitable at $20 a barrel. I mean, that is pretty amazing. Yeah, that's a nice thing about fracking. Those guys are lean and mean. It's not like trying to relocate a, a North Sea drilling rig. So when they have to shut down to reopen a fracking site, isn't as, as expensive as it would be with conve- you know conventional drill site. So uh, um, you know the, the 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 potential sources of natural gas are not not so overwhelming that the uh, natural gas futures are not having their perverse rally. But uh, I don't know when the last time we talked was, but uh, for the last six or eight months. 
I've been on the same note with, with crude oil, and that is that the story that was that was driving crude for uh, at least a while was a complete phony. It was a hoax. Uh, you know, we had a nice rally in 2016, crude at bottom somewhere around 37 bucks a barrel, and at the early 2017 lows, it had gotten up to 57. So that is a rally of some magnitude, but I saw it as a, just a, an absolute hoax because the story that was driving it was, was a, a supply side story. It was as though you could have a bull market in something simply because a couple of producers, Saudi Arabia, uh, Iran, Venez uh, Brazil were colluding to suppress supply, but they're so desperate for money that you knew that they were going to only be able to do so much suppressing. And, uh, and, and, and that's what we're seeing. The story was an absolute fraud. And on some days, you know, the, the press is always willing to spin it. However, the industry wants it. You know, the, the, the reporters are a bunch of lazy idiots. And I say, that having been a newspaper editor myself and reporter for seven years, uh, they've grown so terminally lazy that they, they just get fed press releases and that's what the news is. So the news, they actually spun the oil story for a while, that the oil rally on what would happen if the chaos in Venezuela becomes so so hor horrible that uh, that there's a complete curtailment of uh, Venezuela and crude. So again, supply side story, and and that's not that is not how true bull markets happen. You know that the story you want to see supporting uh, a, a rally in oil is going to be demand driven. It's going to be well, China's economy is starting to perk up and this right. and that, but we don't have any of that on planet Earth. The only thing that's perking up is financial assets, as we know, but there's no real great uh, return to manufacturing heavy industry. So I've got a 43 target on May crude, uh, currently trading 48.15, but I put that target out when uh, crude was 56. So it's sounding less radical now, but at 43 has been my target all along. That's where we're going even and probably even lower. Uh, all bets are off if some jihadi takes out a, uh, a tanker in the uh, Hormuz Strait or something like that. Yeah, well, I hear the, uh, the Somali uh, pirates have been uh, active again, so... Yeah, yeah, but Trump's Trump's the kind of guy to give him just a little bit of Teddy Roosevelt, you know? Yeah, definitely. I'm waiting to see that, because he needs a quick victory, and that would be a perfect place to do it, you know? Well, they're piss ants, you know, these hijackers, and right. I don't know that, that it would be. Trump's going to get score a lot more points if he stands up to North Korea. And, of course, since uh, since uh, our Secretary of State has already uttered the words preemptive strike, Trump is on the right track with respect to North Korea. But at the diplomatic level, uh, Trump's success there uh, could come from just being a little bit nastier with the Chinese, and that depends on, you know, whether we decide to put, put uh, you know, cruise missiles in, in, in in, in Taiwan or Japan. So Trump has some leverage there. And if he can just bring the uh, the Chinese, to, if he can get them to bring the North Koreans to heel, that will be a distinct policy victory for Trump. Yeah, well, well it's going to be interesting to see how it shakes out. Just, we, just, uh, we just don't know. The guy sure does seem insane, though. Uh, is it an act? Uh, I wonder. Oh, oh, he had his brother murdered in an airport with people who put a poison cloth over his mouth. Um, yeah. You know, he's uh, reminds you of the old days where, you know, the Bulgarian uh, contingent of the KGB right. used to go out there. There was one homicide where they they put uh, a ball bearing. It was something, no, it was something about a thousandth the size of a small ball bearing in the tip of an umbrella that was barbed. And they, they, yeah. they put this poison thing in a, in a guy's calf. And, of course, we had the... Uh, the plutonium poisoning of plutonium, uh, the yeah. Russian right. in, yeah. in London. I remember, yes. All right, so we're looking at it. Uh, gold, it's wait and see. The stock market's wait and see. We're kind of like in a wait and see attitude here, aren't we, Rick? Wait and see in interesting times, Gary. Yeah, yeah, because the, the trend's really undefined right now. I mean, I guess you could say the trend for the stock market is still up because... Look, a trend in motion continues in motion until it stops. And really, there's nothing to say that the trend stopped yet. Well, there's my 2404 target in the E-mini S&Ps. So I'll just cross my fingers because it'd be right as rain if the Dow were to be cut in half. At least we could get back to, we'd have a chance to get back to honest business. Yeah, well, that's a long shot at best, but we will see. Anyway, Rick, uh, hey, where do we go to uh, find out more about you again? rickackerman.com uh if you go to the, the, there's a there's a subscriber link there on the homepage, rickackerman.com the service is called rick's picks and uh there's a, at the top of the page there's a green 
button you can click that says sign me up. That will get you a two-week free trial subscription uh, that gives you the actionable trading guidance that I put out each day, including these uh, these uh, diamond puts that just quadrupled in value yesterday. And uh, you also have access to our chat room, which draws some of the great, great traders from around the world. And they're not only gifted traders, but they're a very helpful bunch by and large. It's a great place for a beginner trader to come in and get mentored. And you also get notifications on these impromptu request sessions that I do, where I basically look at stocks in, in a technical way that, that uh, subscribers are interested in. So all of those things free for two weeks if you just go to rickackerman.com and click sign me up. All right. Hey, any questions, comments uh, for Rick or anyone else you hear on the show? Send me an email, kl at kerrylutz.com, kl at kerrylutz.com. Twitter feeds at Kerry Lutz, and the Facebook page is Financial Survival Network. Rick, thanks for being with us. Keep up the great work. We'll talk to you again real soon. Thanks, Kerry. Always a pleasure to be on your show. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Considering on that tax relief, it'll be two years at best before anybody sees relief, and uh, even most the most immediate relief immediate relief would be in a repeal of Obamacare, which, as we all know, was the single largest tax ever levied against the American middle class. It was just a huge uh, payment transfer scheme, and and it, the burden on business that it placed on business will be alleviated somewhat relatively soon. Yeah. So you think they're going to come to an agreement, huh? Well, they have to because even nothing would be better than Obamacare. You know, I know this personally because we've had, you know, four or five different plans over the last several years, my family plan, each one costing much more than the one before it, each one offering fewer choices and higher deductibles. And I'm not the, I'm not the only one in America and basically all of Obama, all, the only only thing Obamacare did was shift 10 people, 10 million people over to Medicaid. So, so it's an absolute certainty that, uh, you know, that Obamacare is going to get flushed down the toilet where it deserves to be. And, uh, and also the little bit of weakness that we've seen in the market, which has been attributed by the usual idiots to, to uh, worries that Obamacare, uh, that, that the Trump replacement health care plan is in trouble. Well, they're all wrong. And, and typically any trend that is said to be, that is uh, attributed attributed to some specific item of news, uh, the pundits are always wrong about that. So in that respect, I guess we're going to see the weakness reverse. Mm -hmm. So so it ain't over then, huh? Well, it's uh, the market's still a betting man's game. And when you look at, uh, I, you know, if I were to bring the bearish case here and now, they're just a couple things. One, we've got a perfect storm brewing in the uh, residential real estate market. It came about because uh, the, the supply of homes is relatively tight everywhere, and that's forced prices up, but it's come at the same time that we've had uh, an 80, point, 80 basis point rise in the uh, long-term interest rates. So to me, the, you know, that, that's the makings of a housing bust. But if you don't believe that, just look around at the commercial sector. If you go to any mall, uh, you can see that uh, all the retailers are having trouble. And uh, it's like th they've all become Sears in a way. They, they can't cut uh, uh, stores. Uh, they can't close stores quickly enough. And we're not talking about Sears and, and, and a bumbling retail operation. We're talking about the sharpest guys in the business like Macy's and uh, maybe uh, and, and Nordstrom and, you know, some of the giants. So all of this amounts to probably the biggest episode of creative destruction, the, the death of the brick and mortar retail business in the United States. Uh, we've never experienced creative destruction in, in such quantity, in such degree. And for the Dow to be trading up here at 21,000, you know, 20,000, just, just at the same time, this trend is really starting to, to snowball. It's, it's absurd. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is absurd, but it's amazing. It's gone nine years here, Rick. I mean, how much longer can it really go? Yeah, well, I know you asked that question, Retour, a couple of months, but it hasn't happened. And, you know, uh, when you're trying to pick the mother of all tops in a bull market that just entered its ninth year, uh, you do it with a little bit of, uh, with a grain of salt, a little bit of humility. But uh, that said, uh, my subscribers were short just at the right time. We bought 
DIA diamond puts and calls in the VIX, which is a, a VXX, which is a volatility bet. And uh, we hit it just right getting in yesterday morning when the market opened with a little head fake. But it wasn't just a serendipity. I was looking at charts and in particular, an E-mini S&P chart that showed a target up near 2,400 that had taken 13 months to reach. So it was a clear target because of the, um, you know, the 13 months, it stood to be an important one. And so far, even though I say somewhat facetiously, hey, it looks like we've nailed the mother of all tops, uh, there is that chance. Uh, on the other hand, if we see the market reverse here and, uh, and jam that old target, I could make a case for everything up to a technical case uh, for as high as Dow 25,000. So you'd never want to underestimate this, the craziness of this stock market, even if you have a dozen good reasons to, to, to hate it. Yeah. Yeah. So it ain't over till it's over, in other words, huh? Uh, for sure. And, and you know, whatever bullishness, I don't think that it was wrong to be bullish about uh, the Trump administration. Uh, there was definitely going to be a cutting back on the regulatory juggernaut. And also we were going to see some tax relief. But, you know, it's like how, how, how much mileage can the stock market get out of that, especially concertly? And uh um, I'm prepared, really, to just see you know much higher higher prices. Uh, I'm always ready. I'm always uh, shorting good rally targets, like I mentioned uh, the other day, yesterday. Uh, but I just try to keep an open mind because you know the market is not it's not informed by thinking about fundamentals or whatever. It's the market is essentially being levitated on a global flood of funny money. Um, you know, you know, despite the talks about tightening, money is not that tight. You know, if, if uh, investors can get thirty billion dollars to throw at a piece of garbage like uh, like Snap or that recent IPO, mm -hmm. uh, you know that money is not hard to come by. There's just money chasing the market, but it almost looks like a perpetual mo motion machine because the money market, the money managers get OPM, other people's money, to throw at whatever garbage they, is moving up. They're all momentum players at this point, and uh, when the stocks go, go up. The CEOs get bonuses. Everybody gets their, you know, gets to cash out their stock options. It's like win, 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 win. Everybody wins, and uh, except it's been observed really that uh, there's still that gap between Wall Street and Main Street. Main Street, uh, there are a lot of people still wallowing in the great financial crash aftermath. They're still in recession. So there's really a huge disconnect there. But uh, in terms of what is feeding the market, and I didn't mention one gigantic factor, and that is uh, companies doing buybacks of their own shares. And, uh, and in the case of Apple, you know, Apple is all, all they've got to offer the world in terms of FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Today is March 22nd, 2017. And well, it looks like the market is finally meeting some resistance. Is uh, this the long awaited correction? Well, we don't know that yet for sure. It's only down around 31 points today and right at 1.30 in the afternoon. So the NASDAQ's up and so is the S&P marginally. Apple's up I guess it's a new high around 140 and so is Google. So who knows? But Rick Ackerman's with us. Uh, Rick, uh, welcome back. It's been a while. Always a pleasure to join you, Kerry. Hey, likewise. So so I guess uh, you've been following this market for very closely for quite some time. Uh, have we finally gotten to the point where it's going to turn around? Has Trump phoria finally faded or is it just uh, just taking a little breather? It's over, Kerry. It's over. No, I'm I'm, I'm just kind of kidding. You know, most of my, <laughs> my forecasting is purely technical, and uh, I'm always looking for reasons for top. I've got uh, 100 fundamental reasons why I wouldn't be shocked if the Dow were to fall yeah. points over, over the next uh, 